Hey folks, uh, this is John from Pottery Works. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm making a hydroponic garden. Uh, I'm going to be using the, the Crikey method, uh, so you don't need no electricity to run these. Um, and uh, we're going to, I have a couple of smaller ones that I'll show you later in the video that I've already started a few days ago and they're working well so I'm going to make some bigger ones. Um, what I have here, see, oh, get it in the picture. This is a vinyl post cover. It's four by four. Uh, if you're going to do bigger vegetables, I would probably go with a six by six. But these are about 15, 16 bucks. Uh, it's a six footer. Uh, you can also get them 100 inches long if you have the room for doing, you know, longer piece. So what I've done, I've measured out the post. I started out at three and a half inches on one end and went every five inches so it's going to give me two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen holes uh, which I'm going to use to grow lettuce and greens. Uh, what I'm doing here is d drilling an inch and seven eighths hole and these are going to hold a little inch and a half mesh cups with the plants in them. Now, what the, if you're not familiar with the Crecky method, I'll, send, I'll put a link in the video on um, a couple of videos by Bobby, uh, MPL um, gardener or prepper. Um, he's gone a little farther with some of this stuff, but I just wanted something simple that I can put in the greenhouse where I'm starting some of my plants, and I'll show you that later also. Uh, so all you need is one of these covers. You need a couple of end caps and some really good silicone adhesive. Don't skimp on this. Buy something that's good. I like this stuff. It seems to hold up for quite a while. I'm using, like I said, a two or one and three quarter inch hold saw. Now what's the trick with this so you don't tear it up. It has a little center drill bit. So what you want to do is to start it normally until the drill bit goes through. Then put your drill in reverse and pop piece pops right out. If you try to do it the other way you'll destroy these things. So you've got to put it in reverse. So like I said, start out and forward, get the drill bit through. As you can see it really grabs when it's going forward. So you put it in reverse. And it gives you nice clean cuts. I'm going to finish off these cuts and I'll be back to show you after that. Okay, this is John. We're back. Uh, as you can see I got all the holes drilled. Um, and then this is what we're going to use for an end cap. Now, you don't want to skimp. Make sure you put enough. Let's see if I'm right in the frame here. Yeah. What I do is don't use the little extra tip that comes with it. I just squirt it right out of here. Go right down in the corners. Put a good amount. You can also buy this in a larger caulk gun if you're going to do a few of them, but I'm just doing a few, a couple of the small ones. You keep a lid on it. Alright, now you're just going to push it on this end, push it in nice and tight. Now what I'll do later, I'll let this sit for a couple hours and I'll come back and I'll run just a little extra around the outside. Just as a little insurance so it doesn't drip. And you want it at least set six hours before you put any water in it. Now with this system you use a fertilizer. You can use organic. I have yet to find an organic one that works as well as what I'm going to use. I'm going to use the same thing Bobby uses is the master blend it works. Use a master plan, a little bit of uh, 
sodium nitrate and some Epsom salts. I'm going to be growing greens. Uh, you want uh, so I want 10 grams, 10 grams of uh, the fertilizer, 10 grams of sodium nitrate, and then five grams of Epsom salts. And that's per every five gallons of water. Now I've already done the math. Each one of these holds four and a quarter gallons. So I'm shooting to make, uh, I'm going to make a 10 gallon batch because I have two of these and I also have other stuff that I use it for out in the greenhouse. So let me put this other end on. And I also have another one of these to make. So. I said you don't want to skimp with this stuff. A little more is better. It's a little more expensive this way, but once you open it, they usually don't last very long. So it's not really worth buying a big containers. You'll probably buy a big container for the same one as the little ones. So make sure you got plenty on there. Now like I said, I'm going to let that sit for a couple hours. Just let it set up and then I'll come back and I'll put a little little bit around the outside. Alright, so I'm going to uh, take you out to the greenhouse and I'll uh, show you the systems all set up. Okay, this is our this is our new greenhouse. We, I built this this summer and uh, we're still working on a couple of things. I still have to get a fan in here, exhaust fan, and I've ended up putting two heaters in. I bought this one new but it has a nice little safety feature that if it runs out of oxygen it shuts off and the snow would cover the door and it cut off the oxygen here shut off so needless to say I got up around 3 o'clock in the morning and it was 24 degrees in here and I lost some stuff so I put this little tiny second heater in here just as a backup but I'll show you what I have growing here right now um, I have this uh, the ready heat digital system it's uh, in the bottom here is a 21 by 10 foot mat that goes the whole length of this, all the blue you see. Uh, that's a heat mat for germinating. Uh, I had it at 75 degrees till some of the plants germinated and I turned it down to 70. These are all my tomatoes, peppers, um, there's garlic chives, lemon balm. Um, this is uh, Curly cress, which is like a pepper grass. Some of this stuff I just got planted is just coming up. Uh, some arugula, some parsley, some kale. This is just a lettuce mix. And then this is another way. I bought these last year. I really like them. Uh, they were from Burpee Seed. But honestly, I won't buy any more because they just they just don't aren't good enough. I don't think I, I grow in the soil. Uh, upper level, this is just a Muslim mix, uh, some other plants, this is just some, uh, it's called the winter, winter Denali, winter something, um, it's really good, it only germinates in real cool soil, so that one wasn't underneath this. Uh, Parcel, which is something different I'm trying, uh, Cook's, Country, or Cook's Kitchen came out with this, I think it's a burpee company. Uh, it's a parsley and celery mix, we'll see. Garlic chives, some uh, salad burnet, red sorrel, uh, some cat mint. I put, I'm putting this in for the bees. Bees really like it. Uh, this is just some uh, beets. Uh, these are going to be for greens. Uh, and this here, this is Tokyo Bacana. I don't care where, how you put this in, 
it grows and it'll last all winter in the greenhouse without any heat. Uh, that and the spinach that I grow, uh, which is raccoon, is very, very good. This is some more Mizuna mix. Uh, this is, uh, I'm not sorry, uh, muslin mix. This is Mizuna, just a plain green. I, we use it as a uh, salad green. Because um, we had such a terrible year this year out in the cold house. I lost so much stuff. We, we, one day it would be 50 degrees, next day it would be zero or, or minus one. Uh, this is uh, just some uh, black seeded Simpson, just a salad mix. But here's, here's what I'm out here to show you. This is the little, the little system. I had a couple of scraps. That's how I started with this. Just a couple of little scraps uh, that I had off of a fence post. And uh, as you can see, these are the little baskets. Already, if you can see that, the roots, oops, the roots are already coming out. I don't know if I can see that or not. Um, but I put them, these were uh, growing in soil, and I pulled most of the soil off, and then I put some wood wool in there, and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, but I've got two of these little ones, and they're really growing. They really made a big difference in the, in the plants already, just in that little system. Uh, there's my onions, leeks, uh, pea shoots for salad. Uh, and then these are, let me put the camera down for a second. These are some of the plants that I've started for those, the long ones I'm doing. Uh, these were done the same way. These are pulled out of some of these boxes and then wrapped in wood wool. Uh, here's, if you're not familiar with wood wool, um, it's mostly grown in hydroponics. I've tried starting them and actually I put two in here with some lettuce seeds yesterday see if they'll grow again I, I, I didn't have much luck getting them to grow out of that and then these are the little these are the little inch and a half baskets if you did with the uh, the same thing with those with the um, six by sixes you could use a three and a half inch basket but the way these things go I think you could grow anything um, and like I said I used well, most of these I've used three of the wood wools I'll pull the plant, make get most of the dirt off of it, and just kind of wrap it so it sits down in there nice and snug. But those are the ones that are going into the other ones. And then I'll start some other guys. But this is my little greenhouse. Now what I did is I have, I have a thermostat here that goes into the house. It's a wireless. Now I, I watched a video on, tube, on YouTube that a guy in Canada was heating his greenhouse with Christmas lights. As you can see, I've got nice, clear, regular Christmas lights that went through here. Uh, he says he heated the greenhouse, kept it from freezing. Bullshit. Um, what I do at night, I'll come out here and I, I build a little greenhouse over this, because these are where my seedlings grow. And I'll put a cover over it. And that just keeps the warmth inside from the heat pad. Keeps the, keeps the plants nice and warm so there's not too much shock to them. And then I move them up to the shelves, which are there. There's a couple shelves over there. And I have, I can, got enough room that I can raise up all the way around. Now this greenhouse was, was an expensive endeavor. Um, but we wanted something with last. We used all clear number one Western Red Cedar. Uh, double wall, polycarbonate walls. Uh, I have a, a thermostat fan that's going up there for vent in the, uh, in the summertime and I'll probably put a cover on. And I bought this uh, cheap off of Amazon. It's a little wall fan just to keep the air circulating in here. And here's my other row tub that I had in the house last year. And uh, I had some plants growing in it, but they never really did well. I wasn't using the right fertilizer. I was trying to do it organic. And you can see how far. I actually had some really nice stuff, but they just wouldn't get really big. So that's when I went to the uh, to the other the other fertilizer, and I've noticed a big difference. Um, 
And then what I do is I make up a batch. These are 12 gallon buckets. And I'll make a batch of fertilizer, liquid fertilizer to keep them full. And then I mix it in a little bit of, with water. And also something else, uh, maybe to help somebody else. Um, I was having a lot of problems with mold growing on top. As you can see, there's a little bit of green in here. What I've been doing is mixing, taking that sprayer, and I mix uh, a tablespoon of baking soda per gallon of water and kind of spraying it every day, just trying to keep the mold down. Uh, from what I understand, it's a preventative and not a killer, but we'll see. Uh, this is something I just started this morning. This is actually sunflower seeds for sprouts. Um, if you've never tried sunflower seed, uh, you can buy just regular bird seed sunflowers um, instead of trying to find organic sunflower seeds uh, because they don't, they don't have any poison on them. Like I said, with the peas, that's what I do here. Just as long as they're not treated, you can still see the peas inside. They were just laid on the surface. I put them in a uh, bucket of water for a couple days and uh, let them swell up. And I just spread them over that dirt and I'll put a, um, another one of these upside down on it to keep it moist. And then this will be the other side. This other side will get plants when the tomatoes and stuff start getting big and I have to divide them. But uh, I just wanted to share those. These little garden things with you. These only been in there, uh, I think, about three days. But the color has really changed already, and the root system is already kicking in. So, yeah, probably a little bit of plant shock, and then after that, they'll really start growing. And that way, these won't be all that heavy, because these they weigh a lot because they're full. Uh, so I don't have to worry about them toppling over. All right. Well, this is John from Pottery Works. Hope this helps somebody. See you later.